You don't have the scroll? Then we have nothing to talk about. Hello and welcome back. In the final episode of the Thieves' Guild questline we will explore, the unheard dialogue from the Grey Fox on the curse of the Grey Cow, and what happens if you fail the ultimate heist. To explore these questions and more, we must first initiate the quest, the ultimate heist, which we begin when loitering by a poster of the Master Thief in the Waterfront District, and are soon approached by an Argonian messenger, Amise, who informs. I have another message from the Grey Fox. What is the message? The Grey Fox requests a meeting. Please travel to Athralo's house in the Imperial City Elven Gardens. May Shadow hide you. Departing for the city, our quest updates. Amuse has given me another message from the Grey Fox. I'm to meet him at Othrello's house in the Elven Gardens district in the Imperial City. Entering the Elven Gardens district, we look up in awe of the looming white gold tower and, veering left, dart through a flowery alley to find a lone Dunma blocking our entrance who intercepts. The Grey Fox is waiting inside. Get inside! The Grey Fox is not a patient man. Once inside his spacious two-story dwelling, we see the Grey Fox seated at a nearby dining table, finishing an evening meal, and he directs. I've been waiting for you. Have a seat. Seated, he proposes. Are you ready for one last great heist? What do you mean, the last heist? This is the big one. This is the heist that will be written about and talked about for decades to come. We are going to steal one of the Elder Scrolls from the Imperial Palace. Are you ready for this challenge? What? An Elder Scroll? How is the buyer even paying? There is no buyer. This is for glory, not for money. Our names will become legend. I also have a personal need for this particular scroll. As for your compensation, I ask you to trust me. If my plan works, you will get a reward worth far more than mere money. Will you do it? We can then choose either. This is too soon. I think that it's actually too tough for me. I understand. I don't want anyone taking on this job unless they feel up to it. Return to me when you are more confident. Take your time. Mulling over the idea our quest updates, the Grey Fox intends to steal one of the Elder Scrolls from the Imperial Palace. The audacity of the theft is astounding. When I am ready, I should come back to him at Othrello's house. Returning, he then questions. Have you decided? You know what? It would be glorious to be remembered through the ages. When do we start? Capital. I have worked for 11 years planning this heist. Sevilla's stone provided the last bit of information I needed. What is the plan? The Elder Scrolls are kept in the Imperial Palace, behind a door that cannot be breached. Sevilla's stone has revealed a path around this door. You will have to travel the old way. Once used as an escape route for Imperial Emperors, it has been forgotten for centuries. To unseal the entrance, you must sneak into the basement of the palace and activate the glass of time. Whatever that is. Whatever that is? Not much of a vote of confidence. Where is the actual entrance, then? In the Imperial sewers. Here is the key for the gate to that section of the sewers. I picked the pocket of Okato himself to get it. It seems if Okato had taken the Emperor through the old way, he may have survived. By the way, what is the old way? My scrying with Sevilla's stone has provided clues, but not the details. I know the tools you will need there, but not the obstacles themselves. The boots of spring Hill Jack will allow you to leap to an unreachable place. They will also protect you from a long fall. The arrow of extrication is the only way to unlock the final door. Take them both. Okay, we've got boots for leaping and falling, and presumably the remade arrow for unlocking. Is that all you know? 
Once you're inside the palace itself, you need to find the reading room. The blind priests will deliver a scroll to you there. How did you manage that? I arranged for the notable Celia Cameron to want to read a particular Elder Scroll. Don't ask how. However, she will be unavoidably detained. You will take her place. Do not speak to the priests. They're blindfolded and will not realize it isn't her, unless you speak. As the Guildmaster, I am waiving blood price for anyone you killed during this heist. However... I can't stop the watch from putting a price on your head. So, then we take an Elder Scroll from the blind monks that think we are some notable female, and we cannot make a sound. Also, they're the blind monks that we tangled with previously to steal Sevilla's stone, and they went blind from reading the Elder Scroll too much in the Imperial City before being put out to pasture in their temple deep in the Jural Mountains. I can't remember all of this. I've written it down for you in this book. I've chosen you because you are the best. Good luck. We then received the plan for the big heist, Boots of Spring Hill Jack and Restored Arrow of Extrication. Attempting to get further information from the Grey Fox, he scolds. You should be on your way by now. Good luck. I guess after 11 years, I'd be impatient too. But why does he need the Elder Scroll? Departing Othrello's abode, we note in our journal, the Grey Fox intends to steal one of the Elder Scrolls from the Imperial Palace. The audacity of such a theft is astounding. The Grey Fox has laid out the plan for me. It's not simple, but he's given me a written copy for my reference. He's even set aside the guild rule of blood price for this heist. Now, I just have to execute the plan. The first step is to infiltrate the Imperial Palace and activate the Glass of Time. Whatever that is. Speak. Arriving at the Green Emperor's Way, we now fully appreciate the foreboding tower's menace as it dares us to attempt to breach its treacherous, unknown innards in search of an elusive Elder Scroll. Entering the palace's large double doors, an elite palace guard to our left warns. All visitors to the Imperial Palace are asked to keep their voices down, especially if Council is in session. Seeing the Council Chamber in front of us, we ignore the locked room and recheck the plans the Grey Fox had given us, being one, activate the old way using the Glass of Time. It is located inside the Imperial Palace. I do not know what it looks like or exactly where to find it. <laughs> Detailed plan indeed. However, if there is one thing we know about off-limit areas, is that guards love to bark warnings when they draw near. Finding the single sentry stationed at the end of the hall, he then instructs. Remember, trespassing in the Imperial Palace is a serious crime. Do not venture beyond the first and second floors. Ah, so the basement must be off-limits. Naughty, naughty. Casting a charm spell, the guard suddenly prompts. All visitors to the Imperial Palace are... Move along. And we sneak away to breach the hard lock to the Imperial basement. Apparently, our mind trick working. As soon as we enter the basement, we see a guard approaching and slam ourselves against the nearest pillar. If that guard had turned in our direction, or even half pretending to be awake during his rounds, our heist would have been over before it even began. Trailing the guard, we quickly learn why he was so lackadaisical in his duties, as we see piles of clutter in the dark befitting the most benign of basements. Probing around the many crates while listening out for the guard, we come up with common clutter and not much else. Dejected, we decide to instead follow the guard's path skirting around said clutter and find the outer hall which holds an insanely large wooden throne. Bewildered, we momentarily check on the guard and approach next to the throne an equally large club, imagining for a moment a creature big enough to wield it. Next to the club is a giant crystal ball that would surely put Sevilla's stone to shame. And finally, in the southern corner, we locate what must be the fabled glass of time Touching the hourglass, 
it suddenly activates with swirling energies and our quest updates. I've activated the glass of time. According to the Grey Fox, the door to the old way in the Imperial sewers should now be open. Now, I just have to find it. Successfully scampering out of the palace unseen, we make a beeline through the Arboretum past our old friend Lathia the Laggard. A coin for an old beggar. To the exposed grate leading to the southeast sewer tunnel below in search of the old way. Before entering as a quick aside, I've chosen to download the Shrouded Cowl mod. Although I do tend to keep things pretty mod free, I believe a face obscuring piece of cloth is an apt disguise when committing the ultimate heist. Plus, it obviously looks badass. Inside the dank sewers, we begin our crawl through the foul excrement, thankful for the cloth that shields our nose, and dispatch the dreary denizens therein, soon finding ourselves at a large metal door leading to the beneath the arena's bloodworks. Once inside, the raw sewage smell is replaced by the copper smell of blood that wholly invades our nostrils. In front of us, we spy a macabre display of corpses lashed to the walls and realize the source of the smell, looking underfoot to see a small stream of blood carried from the bloodworks above. Opening a grate to our right, we see skulls hanging from the archway as a warning, and inside the den of a lone individual, no doubt consumed with ill intent. <gasps> die, Imperial, die! <laughs> As our attacker goes down with a huff, we draw nearer to see it was a vampire. Sick of tangling with these undead fiends, as we examine a nearby hanging corpse above a fire, the pieces begin to fall into place. The dead must be thrown from above after being beaten to death in the arena matches. The vampires down here, with their steady supply of blood from the bloodworks, the city's rejects have no doubt nestled quite nicely undisturbed in this section of the sewer until now. Dispatching a group of the ghastly ghouls as we delve deeper into the bloody sewers, we finally find ourselves at the end of the winding tunnel and, using the Imperial sewer key gifted to us by the Grey Fox, see a cobweb-laden manhole cover and our quest updates. I found the sewer entrance that the Grey Fox told me to look for. Now I need to find the old way. Inside the palace sewers, we perform a number of silent executions on the remaining vampires loitering about, Oof. before descending down past the drainage pools that lead to the final sewage outlet, revealing a crumbling stone wall that has been exposed to show the remnants of a strange old door. A quest, then updates. I've found the old way. This is clearly a long abandoned sub-basement of the Imperial City. It looks like it's going to be a long journey to get into the Imperial Palace this way. I need to find the door that connects to the palace interior. If I remember correctly, I will need the arrow of extrication to unlock time in order to open that door. Inside the aptly named basement, we pause as we see a single wraith loitering below. Firing an iron arrow proves ineffective, and the wraith rears up as we switch to the supernatural searing silver arrows. Deep in the sub-basement, we then explore its twisting halls, which for context for viewers, personally I think Oblivion's dungeons can become somewhat repetitive, so when I say it was an agonizingly winding set of tunnels full of a variety of undead, well, you get the picture, but I also wanted to use more of a floating cinematic camera to soak in the atmosphere instead of watching me fight a few dozen of the same skeletons and ghosts back to back, while also showcasing some of the highlights of the dungeon. Escaping the tunnel, we emerge in what appears to be the remnants of a cavernous alien ruin, soon seeing two push blocks on an out of reach second level glimmering in the darkness. Dispatching the denizens of the room, we see to our left a broken staircase 
and crossed the hall past two inactive dark well kind stones, seeing an archway leading to the exit. However, as we approach the grating, we note that the gate is closed shut and must be opened remotely. Remembering the Grey Fox's instructions, we read the note and point three reads, Inside the old way is an entrance to the heart of the Imperial Palace. Sevilla's stone was only able to scry the two most important obstacles. For one of them, you'll need to use the boots of spring Heel Jack. Returning to the stairs, we indeed divine we will require spring Heel slippers once more, and equipping them can easily activate the two switches to the left and right, which unbars the grate, and our path to the Hall of Epochs is now open to us. Inside the Great Hall, we see in front of us three alien statues in reverence to a long-forgotten cultural icon. Ascending the stairs, two dark, well-kind stones menacingly glow at our intrusion, and our quest updates. There must be some secret way to open this door. I'll bet this is where I have to use the Arrow of Extrication. Most likely, I have to be standing in a special place for the keyhole to open up, though. It will be somewhere with a clear view of this pillar. Turning about, we indeed see the pressure pad that lay between the two dark Welkine stones, now seen more as a beacon for our cause. However, as we approach the area, we notice these walls look like they're meant to move. Maybe the place I need to stand to fire the arrow is behind them. I better look for a way to get through them. Now, to move these pillars, we could follow each adjacent hall for a switch, and it should be noted the ultra-rare blade skill book, Fire and Darkness, which is the only copy in all of Cyrodiil, can be found during this quest in a side room in the second southern hall of Epochs. However, we, as an expert master thief, equipped with the boots of spring Hill Jack, decided better to hop around the stone obstacle in a display of acrobatics, so deftly and quick that it would make Jackman, Earl of Imble, blush if we hadn't already burned up his body like a candlestick. What's the matter? Getting tired? Ha! Standing on the pressure pad, our quest and updates. This must be the spot. Standing on this pressure plate opens the pedestal at the far end of the room. I should practice with normal arrows a few times before trying the arrow of extrication. I only get one try. Stepping on the platform, the alien pillar spins to reveal a well-kind-like stone in its center and a small keyhole, which we then dutifully notch the arrow of extrication and fire it in the hole as per the Grey Fox's instructions. Successful! Our quest updates. I've used the arrow of extrication to activate the door and open the secret way into the palace. There is no telling where I might end up. I should take care to extinguish my lights, muffle my footsteps, and be stealthy as I enter the door. Ascending the stairs towards the exit, we're shocked to see the twin alien statues come to life and bear down on us. <laughs> Forcing us back into a corner, the Goliath ancient elves show a single weakness as our burning blade visibly cripples the mace-wielding male. And so we toss a fireball that drops him where he stands, and his sword-wielding female companion soon follows. Attempting to pick up her alien longsword, the ancient weapon crumbles to dust in our hands. Passing the trial, we then proceed to the stone door to the Imperial Quarters. We then find ourselves in the Imperial Palace barracks as a half dozen guards spill out of the room for duty. We look behind us briefly and see our point of entry has all but disappeared. Very sneaky. Tiptoeing now through their sleeping quarters, we see the remaining sleeping palace guards and think better of robbing them with our prize within arm's reach. Instead, following the patrol past their mess hall and finding ourselves in a familiar corridor. It should be noted, if we happen to veer right, we could find the door that leads to the council chambers and possibly guards will be hot on our heels. Trespassing in the Imperial Palace is punishable by death or prison. Your choice. Attempting to charm said guard, we try. I don't have any gold. Can't we just forgive and forget? Then pay with your blood! 
Unfortunately, half the garrison joins in on the fun. I'm just warming up, you pathetic worm! Now, knowing the deadly stakes, let's instead explore heading left, where we soon find ourselves at a wooden door to the Elder Scrolls Library. Littered across the floor, we find crumpled paper as if someone was discarding some work they were dissatisfied with, leaving the palace guard thoroughly busy and distracted, giving us time to slip past him. Opening the central door, we then see it leads to the Elder Scrolls Library. However, heading southeast, we soon find a blind monk by a grate and creep past him to learn the door to the library is inaccessible and opened elsewhere. Thinking on our feet, we spy a lever next to the monk and skirt back around the inner wall behind him to pull the lever, unlocking said door. We then reread the Grey Fox's directions, being, I've arranged to have a particular scroll made available in the chamber. The blind monks that care for the scrolls are expecting Celia Cameron, but you will take her place. Just find the chair assigned to visitors to the library. You must not speak, or they will know it's not her. Just let them bring you the scroll. Entering the library, we see a spectacular circle staircase ascending to the second floor that must be the top of the tower. To our left, a female blind priest bows. Welcome to this holy library, Lady Cameron. Ever mindful to keep our mouths shut. Before we do attempt to receive said Elder Scroll, it is here that we can fail the quest and deal with the very real ramifications which we will soon explore, though it should first be noted. Without the Shivering Isles expansion pack, the book Feyfoken 3 is only available during this quest and it's found on the first shelf to the left. Also handy for a quick escape are the scrolls in the farthest bookshelf to the right, being Superior Detect Life and the Shadow Scroll below it. Dallying no more, we muster up our courage, sitting in Celia Cameron's place in the chair by the great fire, and our quest updates. I've seated myself in the reading chair. Now, I just have to wait for them to bring me the scroll, so long as I don't speak to any of them. The priests seem to be assuming I am Celia Cameron. The priestess then descends the stairs deferentially and announces. Celia Cameron, I present to you the Elder Scroll you requested. Picking up the fabled scroll, we glance at its characters momentarily, appearing to be nothing but benign runes and constellations, but quickly begin to feel some slight ill effect of trying to divine the scroll. Putting it away, our quest and updates. I have the Elder Scroll. This is the treasure of the century. My name shall be known across Tamriel for the theft. Now, to get it back to the Grey Fox. The way back is blocked so I'll have to go upstairs to find a way out. Even though they're blind, these monks will not be easy to sneak past. Ascending the winding stairs, we are cautious to not alert the monks, already feeling that one slip could potentially spell the might of the entire Imperial Dragon Cult somehow crashing down on us. Exiting via a hard lock through its western door, we then skirt past the preoccupied palace guard and up into the blind moth priest's living quarters. And it should be noted, we could rob the monks here, but with an Elder Scroll in tow, it's simply not worth the risk. Instead, we find ourselves being forced to go up before going down. On the floor above, we see we're inside an Imperial Battle Mage's chambers. The Thiefiness has us pause momentarily to marvel at the contents of the display cases as a human skeleton with a pickaxe is in the closest case, and while the case next to it only boasts a paltry silver dagger and sword. To the right of the entrance, if we break into the cases, we could find worthwhile potions, and the case to its right boasts not only a few soul gems, but also the Battle Axe of Depletion, a guaranteed magic item, and an item used to drain magicka. No wonder the mages had it under lock and key. Inside the private quarters, we realize we're inside none other than Arcato's bedroom and find one Breton battle mage with a back turned named Evangeline Benique. Although we could simply just kill the Breton. 
then looting a corpse of a greater stuff of burden and frosty warhammer of the glacier, I personally prefer to keep our stealth intact in case the guards are alerted, and instead we opt to sneak past her. Finding a faux door inside a fireplace just like the palace guards quarters, and see it hides a secret escape in a chute below. Now equipping the boots of Springhill Jack for the Dark Descent. Opening the flu, a quest updates. I've escaped from the Imperial Palace by jumping down a chimney chute in Okato's bedroom. I hope the Royal Battle Mage won't mind me misusing his ash flu. I can only hope my fall doesn't end too abruptly. I wonder if this is what the Grey Fox said I would need the boots of Springhill Jack for. And then we fall. As we land, the boots disintegrate on impact, and it should be noted if we would want to retain the hideous moccasins. We can either make sure to either A, fortify our health, let's say in this case with some Cirilli Brothers wine, aka a little bit of imperial courage to make the fall, or simply have high enough acrobatics, in which case we can then make the drunk descent and barely feel the impact on our now broken ankles. Darting down the hall, we realize we are indeed following the Grey Fox's final step reading. Once you have the scroll, retrace your steps and deliver it to me. Of course, the chances of something going wrong with this plan are very high. When that happens, you'll have to get creative. What's that? So, before meeting the Grey Fox with scroll in hand, what happens if something does go very wrong? Well, if we had indeed bumped into a monk ruining our disguise, our quest would have updated. The moth priests are on to me. I have to get out of here. The way back is closed. My only hope is to go forward and hope I can find another exit. Fleeing the scene sans Elder Scroll, we can actually find a disappointed Grey Fox at Othrello's, and he will scold. You don't have the scroll? Then we have nothing to talk about. However... What happens if, despite there being no blood price for this mission, we decide to cut down a monk prematurely before receiving the Elder Scroll? Ah! Believing ourselves immune to any blood price, our quest would then update. I got into a fight with the monks. The heist is ruined. There is no way to get the Elder Scroll now. My only option is to flee the palace. I'm certain the Grey Fox will expel me from the guild. I don't think they'll let me back in. We're then forced to fight as the priests come barreling down the stairs. Escaping the palace by cutting a bloody swath through the monks, we then seek refuge in Othrello's house and find the Grey Fox has completely vanished from Tamriel. And it should be noted, even if we teleport to him, we land where he once sat, though he's not there. If it's a fight you want, it's a fight you'll get! Then we learn Othrellos and Mandil, seeing up. our disgraced presence, you will become away. enraged at our return. <clears throat> Unfortunately, that is the bitter price of failure for the ultimate heist, as we'll be completely removed from not only the guild, but be disgraced and reviled in the eyes of the remaining members. And we learn this when travelling to the Waterfront What's District. Finding non-essential Thieves Guild members will tend to flee or openly attack us on sight. Showing your face was the last mistake. However, the remaining essential Thieves Guild members will not even acknowledge us as a former member, and when approached, simply sneer in disgust. Go bother someone else. Now, if we didn't botch the biggest heist in history, we could instead follow the Grey Fox's instructions, tracing our way back out of the sewers. However, funnily enough, blindly following our quest marker, makes us take a slight detour, believing the quickest route out of the sewers is via the best defense's basement. Once we break through the basement to the store, the owners Maro Rufus and Venado look on in disbelief as we casually waltz out of their store. Returning to the Elven Gardens district under the guise of night, Othrellos breathes. The Grey Fox is waiting inside. Get inside! The Grey Fox is not a patient man. Once inside, the Grey Fox, clearly excited, urges. You're back! Have a seat, and tell me everything. We then take a seat and produce the Elder Scrolls on the table, much to the thief's disbelief. You have the scroll? I can hardly believe it. The odds were clearly against you. Capital job! Capital! 
I have spent seven years learning how to translate this scroll. Even so, I will need a while to decipher what I have sought so desperately. So, I got the job done and I wasn't seen to boot. What uh, happens now? Ah, still thinking about your reward, eh? <laughs> I have not forgotten you or your loyal service to the Thieves' Guild. You'll just have to trust me. Give this ring to Countess Umbranox in Anvil. Say nothing about me to her. I need to know how she reacts to it. It may provoke anger or tears. If she asks, just tell her a stranger wanted her to have it. Then report back to me on her reaction. The Grey Fox then slides a wedding ring over to us. Perplexed. We attempt to gather counsel, but he simply states, You should be on your way by now. Shadow hide you. Emerging from Athrello's house, sans reward. Our quest then updates. The Grey Fox has yet to pay me for stealing the Elder Scroll from the Imperial Palace. To get my reward, I have to present a ring to Malona Umbranox, the Countess of Anvil, and gauge her reaction to it. I don't understand what this has to do with the Elder Scroll, but for now, I'll trust him. Doesn't seem I have a choice. Entering Castle Anvil, we see the solitary Countess upon her throne, and catch to the left of the entrance our one-time quest giver, still a stranger to us. Approaching him, he questions. You should be on your way by now. Shadow hide you. Seems he's here to make sure we deliver this ring. Wait, the Grey Fox said the ring was to be delivered on behalf of a stranger. Guess we'll find out why soon enough. Proceeding to the Countess, she flatly questions. What do you want? Make it quick. Well, don't ask why, but I was sent to give you this ring from a man who is no doubt a stranger to you. This ring belonged to my husband. He's been missing for over ten years. For some reason, his name and face escape me at the moment. How did you get it? Do you know his whereabouts? Why are you showing it to me? Look, just take it. It's a gift from a stranger. My husband's wedding ring. I never thought to see it again. What I wouldn't give to see him once more. The Countess then springs up out of her chair, declaring, He looks familiar. By the power of the Elder Scrolls, I name Emmer Dereloth as the true thief of Nocturnal's Cow. You're the Grey Fox? I've been betrayed! I am the Grey Fox, but you have not been betrayed. But... I am also your missing husband, Corvus. Corvus? Is it really you? Ten years I've waited for word from you. Why did you hide from me? Ten years ago I inherited this cow from the former guildmaster of the Thieves' Guild. I became the new guildmaster, but I also received its curse. Whoever wears Nocturnal's cow shall have his name stricken from history. Once I donned the cow. No one in all of Tamriel could recognize me. With the cow, I became the Grey Fox. Without it, I was a stranger, even to you. You mean you were unable to return? I've stood right next to you, and you didn't even know it. I cried out to you, Here I am! It's me, Corvus! But you just looked at me, confused. You have broken my heart for a second time. I cannot let the infamous criminal mastermind, the Grey Fox, become the Count of Anvil. If you try to announce yourself as Corvus, I will deny you. I will deny you before the Emperor if I have to. I guessed you would say these terrible things to me. That is why I brought my friend along. From this moment forward, I renounce my life of crime forever. I'm passing the Grey Cowl of the Thieves' Guild to its new guild master. The Grey Cowl is now yours. You are the new guild master of the Thieves' Guild. You will find that history has been altered tonight. Such is the power of Nocturnal's curse that lifting it can alter time itself. Time altered? As promised, first, let's explore the unused dialogue option 
I don't want the cow's curse that was supposed to appear at the end of our conversation with the grey fox after he finishes talking with Malona, to which he would respond with, The curse has been broken. Of course, the thieves will only recognize you as their guildmaster when you wear the cowl. However, when you remove the cowl, everyone will know you as yourself. Fortunately, the cowl still has the power to hide your alter ego from them. They will not realize that you are the same person that just took off the cowl. To them, the gray fox just vanished into thin air. Satisfied, we will obtain the gray fox's prized artifact without the Daedric curse. We then query, you said lifting the curse altered time, so what is different? If Emmer Daryloth had not stolen Nocturnal's cowl, the Thieves' Guild would never have fallen on such hard times. Because of the curse, he was unable to operate in the normal world of business and society. He could only act as the Guild's figurehead. That has been undone. If you go to the Imperial City, you will find that the Thieves' Guild has a guild hall on the site of the ruins of Daryloth. And, just like that has promised, when we exit the castle, we feel something in the air, something different, and our quest updates. The Grey Fox, who is no longer the Grey Fox, but is now Corvus Umbranox, has given me the Grey Cowl of Nocturnal. I am now the new Grey Fox and the new Guildmaster of the Thieves' Guild. Due to the magic of the cowl, the Thieves of the Guild would not notice the change. However, since the curse is lifted, I can remove the cowl and be recognized as myself again. Interestingly, the cowl's magic makes it so that anyone seeing me remove the cowl does not associate me with the Grey Fox. Turning back to the castle, we open the large double doors to see... The Count and Countess now sit side by side, with Corvus's throne looking as if it was always there. Approaching the duo, we pause and study the infamous Count, noting that once we don it, we will effectively become the Grey Fox, and the artifact imparts Detect Life for 120 feet, Fortify Sneak 25 points, and Feather 200 points. However, the duo don't seem to recognize me at all, it's only when donning the cowl, the Countess then shoes. Leave my husband and I alone, Grey Fox. Your presence only stirs up evil memories. Turning to Corvus, he compliments. The new Grey Fox. The cowl suits you. <laughs> Me? I am much happier without it. It should be noted, although we had previously showcased the rumours spread by other Counts and Countesses about Count Corvus's disappearance, such as... I've never heard the Countess mention her husband. I believe it is something of a sore point with Lady Milona. Malona Umbranox, Ariana Volga, and Narina Carvain seem to rule their counties perfectly well without male assistance. Milona Umbranox is better off without that irresponsible husband of hers. The most honorable thing he ever did was to disappear and leave her alone. The Bosma Innkeeper main lawn at the Flowing Bowl would offer... A different rumor. The Count went missing about ten years ago. No one knows what happened to him. Lady Malona rules County Anvil. Her ladyship has no intention of remarrying. Liked her first Count well enough, I guess, and doesn't fancy a replacement. When Corvus returns, if asked for rumors, Main Lorne will then say, The Count went missing about ten years ago, but just recently he reappeared. It's a bit of a mystery but the Countess seems pleased. Farewell. Unfortunately, it's not all warm welcomes, as the guards will immediately pounce on us, threatening. You're the Grey Fox. You're under arrest for... for... Uh, for all kinds of stuff. You're wanted dead or alive. I'm... I'm choosing dead. It's the Grey Fox. You're under arrest. We then hightail it out of the castle. However... As promised, if we remove the mask even mid-fight and yield, the guards will immediately forget the 500 gold bounty on our head and infamous identity. That the best ah! Let's get this over with. Now is for everyone's favourite ex-Imperial Watch Captain Hieronymus Lex, found back inside the castle interior, and when he finally catches the Grey Fox, he will exclaim, You're wanted dead or alive, Grey Fox. <laughs> this will be easier. If you're dead. Better yet, 
If we resist arrest, he further says, I'll make captain for this. We almost don't have the heart to tell him that he's already a captain. You dare oppose the might of the <laughs> Imperial Legion? I wonder where he placed his sword as he impotently pummels away. After exiting the castle, our quest then updates. History has been rewritten. I should go to see the new Thieves Guild Hall in the Imperial City waterfront. The Grey Fox, or Count Corvus as he's now known, told me that I get to run the place. Returning to the waterfront, we can then experience different reactions from citizens therein as we approach them wearing the cowl. It's the Grey Fox. I can't believe it's really you. As I live and breathe, the Grey Fox. It's an honor. You're the Grey Fox. You're the Grey Fox. Please, don't hurt me. Plus, perhaps my personal favorite dialogue is exclusive to the denizens of the Waterfront District, in which they'll thank. You're the Grey Fox. Thank you for everything you've done to help us here in the Waterfront. Awaiting till the evening, we then enter the Garden of Daraloff, expecting a welcome from the thieves, but instead see... The once inaccessible area now holds a small garden, complementing a large wooden double door. Entering with our Guildmaster key, we find ourselves in Daraloth's basement, and we see among the clutter, Thieves Guild members milling about as if they'd always been there. To the right, behind a locked door, we also locate a half dozen lockpicks. Upstairs in Daraloth's house proper, we see in the entrance a large round table with seven seats, no doubt, for clandestine meetings. On the floor above, we again use our key to enter our personal guild master's quarters. Of note, a double bed sits in the east corner, which we can use to rest. And then we also spy atop the bookshelf the familiar Sevilla's stone used to scry the very Elder Scroll that made all of this possible. The room also boasts personalised storage, which, unlike the rest of the house, will not disappear. Waltzing over to the western corner of the room, we marvel at the Grey Fox Wanted poster. It's not long ago, it seemed, the Grey Fox was more myth than man. Now, well, <laughs> we ourselves are somewhat living a legend. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, and thank you so much for the Lawbringer tier of Patreon supporters on screen that makes these RPG lore movies possible. I look forward to covering more of your favourite dark lore, so make sure you like and subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching, and until next time, Traveller.